I started doing facials and stuff. And it's so crazy because the first like business thing that I did was, um, hey man, what's his name? We're here right now. It's um, Quaishon. Mm -hmm. He was doing a network and chill. Right. That's he was doing right. a network and chill. And he had this event and then he was like looking for vendors or whatever. So I'm like, all right. I brought my bed. It was hot as hell. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. I brought my bed, my like facial steamer. I don't know what I thought I was going to do a facial outside. And then I didn't make no money that day, but it gave me like the confidence to keep doing it because a lot of people was like, "Oh, I'm interested. I'm interested." I think I was doing facials for like seventeen dollars or something, and a lot of people was like you know, asking me about my services and whatever. So I'm like, all right, people interested. Even though it's $17, like, people are willing to pay me money for a service and I'm not yes. working a job. Yes. Like, I'm doing something I really want to do. And I'm like, all right, I could do this. So his event, that Network Control event, was, like, one of the first events that really gave me the confidence to really mm -hmm. go and do business. And then after that, I just... I just made a goal for myself, like, if I can make $30 a day doing this shit, I'll keep doing it. And eventually the number got bigger and bigger. I was never even focused on trend. Like, I was just focused on the result that I wanted, if that makes sense. Like, it don't matter if it was trend people. I just needed somebody to buy for my business. I don't know if that makes sense. It does. It does. So, um... Where was your clientele coming from if it wasn't from just Trenton? Um, so I basically, I got all my clients from Instagram. So I would just post, do hashtags and stuff like that. And people would come. I got people from Trenton. At first, I was traveling to people's houses. So I would go up and down the parkway, North Jersey, South Jersey. This is in 2018. And there was from all over. I, don't, I didn't even care where they was from, as long as they was paying me mm -hmm. for the service. So I was just going to get it. Um, and then after that, it was, what I do after I travel? I had a studio on South Clinton, right up the street. Um, I was there for a while. And then I was doing it out my house. Hold on, no. What year is it? This is 2018. 2018, no. 2018, I started traveling. I was going to people's houses. And then after that, 2019-ish, I was doing it on my apartment. I used to live in Grand Courts. And then I had the two-floor apartment. So legally, the requirements for you to do services in your house is you need to have two different entrances. And I did. So that's what I was doing in my house. Then it was like real ghetto outside and my clientele started to change at that time. Like I was getting like more like white people. And I'm like, damn, I don't want them to see all these who bought them outside my place. They looking for the place, asking me directions and they feeling uncomfortable. So that's when I got a studio in South Clinton and then I was doing it out of there. And then while I was there, I found the location where I'm at now, which is in Ewan. So you got suits. that renovated. Yeah, I had to renovate it. Let's talk about that a little bit. So it's so crazy because I had no idea how I was going to do it. I just knew that I wanted to do it. I didn't have no good credit. I didn't even have money. I just, I don't know. I just had this feeling in me like, yo, I need to do this. Again, my clientele started to change more. And the problem that I was having on South Clinton was there was no parking. And then other people that was there, it was kind of like divided, kind of like this in an open space. And, you know, people was playing their music, and I was doing facials at the time, so the vibe just didn't match. And um, I was like, yo, I need my own space. I need a better space for my clients. That's just what I kept thinking about. And I just started looking. No money, no nothing, just putting one foot in front of the other. And I found this place, which I'm in right now, and it was a dentist's office. So I was like... Maybe I could do something with this. Um, it was fourteen fifty at the time. I didn't have no freaking money 
at the time. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to make some shape. Um, and what grant did I get? I had applied for some grant from New Jersey and um, I had got it. So I'm like, bitch, he was looking for proof of funds. I had applied for the grant before um, I was looking for the place. You know what I'm saying? So I had applied for the grant, just some, I, don't, I forget what it was, some business grant. I got, I think it was like for 10 or 15,000. And it just so happened, he was like, oh yeah, I work with you. Cause I was talking to him, asking about the price and stuff. And he asked me for proof of funds. I got approved for the grant like two weeks before. So I'm like, this shit is perfect timing. Showed them my bank account because they wired it to me. And then it was just up from there. So now let's, let's talk about the proof of, um, it's basically the, the proof of government funding. Right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't believe, oh, I'm gonna never get a grant. The grant, these grants don't come to me. Somebody else going to get it or, oh, every time I apply, I don't get it. That is so true. And it's so funny because now this is what I help other beauty professionals do specifically. And like, I'll be getting like, people be like, oh, you were a scam. Like, this ain't real. This ain't real. And it's like, it's, it's really real. Like, you can really get funding for your business. It don't matter if you're new. It don't matter if you have bad credit. It don't matter if you have no experience. You just have to know where to look for it. And you have to know how to position yourself in order to get it. It's really easy. Like, I tell people, go on your state economic development authority. I love New Jersey. New Jersey has given me so much money. And it's so crazy because just people, I don't know what it is. It's just their lack of marketing on their part to small business owners or something like that. Or just people just discounting themselves and just automatically assuming that they can't get it so they don't even look. You could literally do it on a Google search. But there's some things you have to have, like you have to have a business plan, basic stuff like an LLC, business bank account, and just to w the will to go through it because it's available, but it, it could take some time. Um, I was lucky with that grant that I got the first time. Um, but another one that I got, it took me about six months to get um and there's different requirements if you don't have the money up front there's grants that can help reimburse you for the cost of improvements if you have a building and stuff like that it's just so much money out there and um a lot of beauty business owners that's specifically who i'm talking to but it applies to all business owners in general um you there's funding there's funding out there you just have to know where to look. All right. So introduce yourself and tell us what do you do. Okay, my name is Asada. Um, I am an entrepreneur at this point. Um, I have a sugaring business. It's an all-natural alternative to hard wax. It's made with lemon water and sugar. It's a form of hair removal. Um, I also am getting into, not am getting into, but I also help other beauty professionals find grants and funding for their business so that they can expand and grow and get inventory and really just reach the, the business goals that they want to achieve in their business. Um, so basically educating other beauty professionals on funding and things like that. Okay. When did you, when did you add the second portion to your um, portfolio as far as you doing that? The teaching people how yeah. I did what I did. Because people kept asking me. People kept asking me, um... Like, how did you get a building? And another thing, the only reason why I did like the hybrid thing with my business, because I do offer services, but I also have salon suites. So I, the only reason why I did that was because I was afraid. Like, I'm like, damn, I'm paying, I'm going from $500 a month to $1,500 a month and utilities and all of that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. So I did the hybrid model because I needed other people to help me with this vision. Cause I'm like, I, I got something going. That's why I renovated it. Cause I'm like, I could still make a profit and help other beauty professionals. So you have other owners in your business? Yeah, basically, yeah. So How it's like a sublease. It? It's, it's um, one, it's, it's four. They're all filled? No, they're not filled. So you, you're, you're also looking? Yeah, okay. I'm looking. 
You can let them know. Where Where is this space at? So it's in Ewing, um, right across the street from Ewing High School. Um, all utilities are included. Um, the rent is six hundred dollars a month, and we have parking. Very low key, very nice. Just very interested. Yeah, we'll let them know. All right. Um, we also also seen you getting into the content space with all the information you know. How did content you making content? Because a lot of people sleep on that. How did you making content also impact your your growth as an entrepreneur? So. How I look at content is basically you nurturing your audience on whatever you have to do and I mean whatever you have to offer basically. These days, like I'm getting back into content, but I don't really post as much. I don't post as much because now I understand the importance of advertising, like paying for paid ads and things like that. Because you can create content, but if you're only reaching a small audience, then they get used to seeing that content or you don't get enough exposure outside of the audience that you already have. So the content, like for instance, on my, my business page, my UN Sugar and Studio, I still have content on there from, from when I first started, 2018. But because a lot of people haven't seen my content, I could use those in ads, and that's what I've been doing to help reach more people instead of me having to constantly create content. But content, doing content is definitely important. But you're at the second level now. I feel like I'm at the second level. And I, and that's what a lot of um, my teachers teach me now is getting out of the, all constantly creating content, whether you can write, where you can make one great piece of content right. and put it on the ad. So right. I'm definitely with you on that. As far as, you know, knowing that's what the next level takes. But, but I didn't understand it in the beginning because it's like, what ads? Somebody had put me on ads in 2018. He was like, oh, run ads, da, 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 da. But I was so used to doing it one way. Mm -hmm. and, what, and what I was doing was kind of working for me at the moment. But with time and because I got burnt out and stuff because I was doing so many things in my business, I'm like, you know, I need to leverage the platform at a higher level in order to get more results for the same amount of work that I'm putting in. But let's talk about the people at step at step one, all right? Let's, exactly. Let's, That's what we're talking about. So at the, for the people at step one, how did content help you from to, to getting to where you are now? At step one? Mm -hmm. It got me out there. It got me out of my out of my comfort zone. All my clients came from Instagram organically. And word of mouth, like just going on Instagram and finding me, searching hashtags up and seeing my name. Um, people telling other people after they find me on Instagram, word of mouth, oh, go to her. She's really good. It's really important because you want people to get to know you before they, they go to you. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It's like having a referral before somebody meets you. Right. It's like right. a, it's, it's, your, it's the, it's your first impression for a stranger. That's basically what it is. And I feel like another thing it does is also make people take you a little bit more serious because this person is this person's really putting themselves out there. A lot of people, it's hard for them to put themselves out there. Even now, I'm sure in the beginning you remember where it's like, dang, I just threw myself in the space where hundreds of thousands of people can see me vulnerable, telling, showing, showing people what I do, talking about it, asking them to give me money, telling them this is all. I, so that, that, Ability to do that and get comfortable with doing that, I feel like it kind of teaches you entrepreneurship in a way. It it definitely, it definitely does. I kind of I could kind of compare it to because I did like network marketing, mm -hmm. and people be like, "Oh, MLM is a scam and stuff like that." But it's kind of like that putting yourself out there because the principles are the same. Like you still have to call people, mm -hmm. but it's not you physically calling them. It's probably you sending emails out or DMing yeah. people, or um, is you constantly talking about a product like it, it gives you it makes you stronger in that sense putting yourself out there yes your confidence it's, in what you do yeah exactly um so where are you now how do you feel now as far as everything as oh you have now. a class coming up did you do something oh my sugaring classes i still do that but um I really wanted to really tell people about the free training that I'm about to have. Okay. So basically, it's going to be teaching people all for free 
how to get funding and get salon suites. So if you're in New Jersey, specifically in New Jersey, because that's where we're at right now. New Jersey is so good for that. But all across the United States, there's funding available in almost every state. I've helped people get funded in Arizona, North Carolina, Virginia, New York, Florida. Um, what else? What other state have I helped people in? Um, California, Arizona, Texas. Um, just teaching beauty professionals, especially new ones, how to get funding for their business. Because a lot of beauty professionals, when they start out, they say, oh, I don't have money or, oh, I can't do it. I need to buy inventory and things like that. Um, so I'm basically going to be teaching them the eight steps that I use in order to get funding with bad credit, no credit, um, and to leverage that money into starting salon suite business or growing or expanding or getting inventory and things like that. When is this training? Um, it's actually, I don't know, you can edit this, but yeah. I'm going to give you a link that you could just put down here and it'll be up there Yeah. for them to do it. I, I figured that it was going to be. So after the training, um, if people still don't understand and if people still have questions, would they be able to receive help? Yeah, definitely. Um, I am offering a community afterwards, super affordable, where, you know, you guys can all come and ask questions, share your wins, share your questions. Um, and really just have a network of people all in your same position where you could come bounce ideas off each other, network, and really get the help that you need because the information is out there, but there's no specific community like this out there made for new beauty professionals, um, that are trying to do the specific thing, like get funding from the government in the position that you're in. Um, so yeah, there will be a community though. So you, you, you've chosen a specific niche. Like you've niched down. You are yeah. trying to help beauty professionals. Beauty is, professionals. That's it. Is it um, difficult focusing on that specific range, or do you find that there's a lot of beauty professionals in the world where you focus on one thing? So before I did this, you know, people locally would ask me because they like they're close to me. Yeah. I test. I ran some ads, and I, you know, I. I just told people what I did. Hey, I got this amount of money in funding. I was able to do this. If you are interested in learning more about it, send me a DM. I got over like 300 people asking me because I didn't even think it was real, for real. So when I seen that, I'm like, okay, there's, there's people out here that want this information. There's people out here that actually want this information. So... Is it scary now that I niche down? No, it's not scary because I know exactly what position they're in. Like I was literally there a couple years mm -hmm. ago. I know how it is to feel like there's no funding. Right. I know how it is to search for a building, actually talk to people mm -hmm. in these rooms and try yeah. to get help and what to say, and what not to say, how to follow up. Like I know from personal experience. So I had a question. I said you said you said something like the, the the towel wasn't always even your primary support system. So how do you feel about the? How, what can you say to people who are stuck in the mindset of well the town won't support me because I ain't popular or the town don't support the town don't support. And if people say that all the time, I hear that all the that. time. Oh, the, the I don't want to do this because she's doing it. It's small. Nobody support. To be honest, like when I went into this business. I wasn't counting on nobody I knew to support me, period. Not even my family. You know we Africans. I didn't even tell <laughs> people that I was doing this at yeah. all. Like, I was in nursing school when I, I failed out. And then I always wanted to do beauty and hair and stuff. But I just never thought that I, was, I could support myself with my business. Mm -hmm. So when I failed out, I didn't tell my mom. I didn't tell anybody. I just signed up for the beauty school. So when I did that, people started, you know, I was posting all the time, organically posting my content. And people would ask, like, my mom and my sister, oh, she's doing makeup and stuff like that. Like, tell her I want an appointment. And they didn't even know what, they, like, what was going on. Mm -hmm. So they didn't find out about my business until other people started asking about them. Because it's really a mindset thing. I just really didn't expect people close for me to even support me. I just didn't. I just went into it like that. I knew strangers was going to support me more than my family. And then eventually they'll follow up but do you think going into it expecting support is what cripples people i i definitely feel that like 
I definitely feel like that's something that cripples people in the beginning because at the end of the day, and it's because they're not educated on business. Like you can't run a business just off of family and friends supporting you because they're not your target audience. They might get services and stuff like that from other places, but it's, I just don't feel like you should just depend on people around you to support you. I just don't. I don't think that people have a target audience. I I think people don't even know what a target audience is. To be honest. Yeah, I mean we're not financially literate. Like even with business plans, like I like we was just talking. I didn't have a business plan. I just was putting putting out content. So later on, when people started asking, when I'm like, yeah, I want to I want to um, get a studio. I want to sell content. I want to you know market people. So people ask business plan. I'm like. You know, but I, I went to school for business, so I understand these. Oh, terms. you did? Yeah, I went to school for business communications. Oh, you know, you know that. so I understood it, but I was just like trying to convert a passion project into it was it was a little bit difficult. So now when I'm looking at these terms, I'm like, dang, this is what the people that's really doing well, they have done this already. You know, they figured this out. They have this down. They know who their target audience is. They know where they're gonna get them from. They know what their niche is. They know how they're trying to market. So it's just like a lot that we don't understand. We just jump in. But sometimes you can jump in and figure it out. But some people really started, you know, from the from the book. Like they started from business plan. I did this. I do that. And it grew as long as the way. But some people still just don't know that you have to eventually get to that point of having a business plan or having a plan. That's, yeah, you know? having a plan. I was going to say just having a plan in general because... I didn't even have a business plan either until they said I needed it for the money. So I'm like, oh shit, okay, now I need to put my stuff together in a way. But definitely yeah. having a plan in yeah. general is is definitely crucial because, you know, we don't learn this. Yeah. We learn, go to school, get a job, and yeah. that's it. But I don't know, being in business since 2018, like my whole mind has just flipped. Right. Now, like, I can't even... The only re- the only reason I will go back to school if it's like something like a passion thing, like I'm just interested and I just want to dive into something like that. But to go back to school and say like I'm depend like I'm dependent on a degree to make money is like nah, because it's so easy to sell. It's just so easy to sell stuff. I, it just don't make no sense for me because I look at going to school as not, I'm selling four years of my time. Like I was, I was almost done nursing school. I was there for three years. I was almost done. And people be like, Oh, you don't want to go back. And I'm like, mm. to the to vote. Now I probably have to do two more years to go back to school. And then I'd be looking at all the nurses and they all burnt out and quitting and they want to do aesthetics and they asking me questions about <laughs> business. I'm just like, mm, it don't seem so appealing to me, but when you're not like educated on other options, right? Um, that's all you know. But also, we need nurses. It's not for everybody. And you would definitely need nurses. We need nurses, so it's like don't. I don't want somebody watching this video and be like, "Damn, I'm a nurse." <laughs> no, like, no, you could. It's not for everybody. You could like, go to school, be a nurse, and start a business still. Yeah, that just you, wasn't. You, you that's just not my story. Right, it's not your story. Um, I was about to say. So when it comes to the grants and the funding and business loans, right? Some of them require business plans. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like we just need to, you know, let people know that because a lot of people don't understand that. Right. So, like, the requirements to get grants. And every grant has different requirements. Right. But if you're, um, but if you want a grant, if you're in a position where you don't have, like, great credit, you have bad credit, um, you don't have any experience with getting funding or you're just looking for a no debt kind of resource to get funding for your business, you're definitely going to need a business plan. And the business plan that I used was from score. You will go online, go to score. It's C not, not C S C O R E like the scoreboard. And they'll give you a detailed business plan that you could just input all your information. Um, in the community, I'm going to have my actual business plan. And it's, it's from SCORE, but I just put a beauty professional flair to it. And that's going to be a template that you can use in a community if you do decide to join. But basically, you can go to SCORE and just input all the information. And it'll give you questions. It'll have 
um, it'll have questions on there that you didn't even think about. Like, um, what were some questions that they had? Like, um, I can't remember the one that I wanted to talk about, but it'll ask you questions about how are you going to go about acquiring customers? Just, it's just a, it's lengthy and it's long, but it's definitely something, something that you could look at to, you know, get your ideas and mm -hmm. get your thoughts flowing. And it's definitely a lot of templates that like, that'll line it all up and you just put the information like a worksheet. It's yeah, a lot basically. Of, it's a lot of worksheets out there. You still got to do the work. You still got to do the work. But it's a lot of worksheets out there that's telling you this is where you put this. This is where you put that. This is where you put this. This is where you put that. So, um, did you, did, when you created your, I know you created the business plan in order to get the funding, but when you created the business plan, did it help you? Like, dang, this kind of makes sense. Like, you already probably had your plan in your head, but once you put it into that template, how did that benefit you? So in, in business, I pretty much, me personally, I, I had all my vision was very clear in my head from jump. Mm -hmm. So it was just me putting it on paper just to get the money. So oh, wow. it just organized my it organized my my thoughts. It was a way for me to communicate what I had in my head already, so that other people gave me the money. But did it like cause my? Did it make it more clear for me? I, I feel like it was already clear to me from the mm -hmm. beginning. But, you know, it could be clear to you, but if other people can't see it, then it's like right. there's no. Um, so how did you have such a clear vision that, it, that even creating a business plan was already in your head what the business plan was supposed to look like? How did you? Well, I use, the, I use the template, but I no, like, I'm the, saying, okay. like even being able to be a successful business and then not have a business plan and, and then put it, put your um, information in a business plan. Yeah. Without it even changing, like what you got going on, that means you had to already, you know, be such so organized and structured to the point where, whether you knew it or not, you were already at another level. Um. And I'm asking how, how like, how can you see? What advice can you give of how you got there? You know what? After all this time and everything that I've done, I realized that it was my mindset from the beginning. And I know it's like a buzz where people be like, oh, mindset, change your mindset, change no, your mindset. It's but it's really real because if you're stuck in a mindset that's not conducive to the goals that you have, you will never reach those goals. Like if you say, I want to get funding, but I can't get it because I got bad credit. You will never look for the ways or the opportunities where you could get funding outside of the reason that you give yourself that you can't do it. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. It's like. I'm, I made a decision, like I was going to do this. Like I literally told myself when I graduated, I'm going to start a business and I'm going to do it. And this is what it's going to be. And I didn't give myself excuses or room not to do it. So why it was so plain is because I decided. It's going to sound like a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo. No, it's, it's really that simple. It's really that simple, but... We make I it can, complex sometimes. We do make it complex. Even... Even like, um, even like what I was going to say, like a lot of people now in trend, they want to start businesses and stuff. And they're saying like, oh, people don't support me and stuff like that. Look at how you're going into business. Like your mindset, you, your mindset is already, it's like you already spoiled. You, it's already spoiled. You're not even going into the business with the right mindset. You're not tough enough. No. Not, not tough enough. In a way, because that's mindset. Mindset yeah, is yeah. toughness. Mental toughness, yeah. It's like being, thinking in a certain way. What I can boil it down to is thinking in a certain way that supports the goals that you have. How are you going to say you want to make this amount of money, but you're not doing the things that makes you that type of money? Like, you're thinking the opposite way. Mm. It all stems from the mindset, I swear to God. It really does. Did you journal? Did you write down goals? I definitely, I was definitely a journaler. I, de I like, I used to work in a group home. So overnight, like I would always be writing down like what I wanted to do, what goals I wanted to do. Constantly just putting my, like right now, well, not right now, but on my screen on my phone, I usually have my goals listed on my phone. So every time I open it, I see the goals that I have for the year, for the week and things like that, or my overall goals that I want to have in business just so it's like refreshes in my mind constantly and it's in front of me so I don't forget right. so like it, it guides me through the day weirdly
All right. Can they give them some websites if they're watching this? Websites to check for grants and loans. Some, okay. That's good. Um, Economic Development Authority. So whatever state you're in, you type in your state name, Economic Development Authority. I'm writing Authority. this down, too. Yeah. <laughs> Neutral, you plugged in, too? I be seeing you. You plugged in with the people. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I got to... <laughs> I got to... You know, need some qualifications, but I'm getting. Oh there. my goodness! Oh, you, I sound like the people you. Know. Yes, you sound like the people. <laughs> I'm yes. gonna get a consultation right after. Yes, this. yes. New Jersey Economic Development Authority, Pennsylvania Economic Development Authority. If you're Black, um, African American Chamber of Commerce. If you're Hispanic, Hispanic American uh, Chamber of Commerce. If you're Indian, Punjabi Chamber of Commerce. These are all entities and um, government entities. Some are government, some are nonprofit that are specifically there to help your demographic and business. I didn't even know an African American Chamber of Commerce existed. I did a Google search. Yeah, we got one in the town. Like, yeah, African. Yes. They actually they gave me like fifteen thousand to renovate my building. They gave me fifteen thousand to renovate my building. That was a loan though. Did you have to join? The crazy part about it, I didn't even join. You didn't have to join. I didn't even join. I had this lady. You're probably my... saying too much. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even join. It's so crazy. And that's why I tell people, especially during the grant funding and the business funding process through these programs, you have to reach out to individuals. Because this lady, her name is Dina Gonzalez. She didn't know me from a can of paint. I told her, I'm like, yo, I, I was so honest. I'm like, yo, I don't have no money. I just had this idea and I really feel like it could work. I gave it to her straight like that. And it took me like a couple weeks to even have a conversation with her. But I was always emailing her, following up, emailing, following up. I'm like, yo, this lady gonna answer. And when she did, she really, really helped me. Like she didn't know me from a can of paint. Maybe I was supposed to get that membership, but she was tied in with the people at the African American Chambers of Commerce. So who you know helps you get in them rooms. What made you keep emailing her? I don't know. Her name just kept popping up on all the stuff that I was searching for in New Jersey. I'm like, well, who is this lady? A lot of people might get discouraged, like, oh, she ain't answered. But these people are dealing with, like, hundreds, maybe thousands of businesses. Like, they're going to meetings. They're going to networking events. They have separate businesses. So you have to keep following up. What was your email pitches like when you used to reach out to people? Oh, let me, let me um, go right to it. Because this is actually a prompt that I have. And it's super simple. But I feel like it'll help a lot of people. What did I say? Let me go on my camera. Hi, I'm Sada. <laughs> Hi, what did I say? Hold on, I'm about to say the exact words that I use when I reach out to these entities, these Chamber of Commerce, the NJEDA, the Economic Development Authority. Let me see. I want to give the exact prompt. It's actually, I actually have a, um, a course and it has everything in it, but the course that I have right now is $97. You can get it if you want to, but it's going to be available in the community. So everything that I teach here will be available in the community. So you have a course available right now for $97? Yes, I do. It's for $97, yep. And it has everything from beginning to end on how to get funding, where to get funding, um, how to grow your beauty business as far as getting inventory products, how to get products for no money. Um, there's a site that I use, it's called Fair, F-A-I-R-E, and it has a whole bunch of products from clothes to beauty products and makeup that you can sell so and retail. It's, a, it's a lot of free games, so to speak. It's a lot of stuff out here. It's a lot of stuff out here. And I knew the stuff that I had to say was valuable because people would be like, oh my God, I didn't know that. Like, this really helped me. I just really was looking for this. I can't find it. Let me see. I want to get this prompt for y'all. You could just tell us like the format of it. You don't gotta give them all. Yeah. The, they gotta pay for the class to get that. No, I could no really. I could really give this away for free. It really don't matter because having information and implementing is different. Like I could give everybody the game, but still, I'll tell everybody everything that I say right now, and they still won't do it. Damn. They still won't do it because of the mindset. They believe that it's not this easy. Okay, so boom. So you're going to find a financial institution located nearest to you or where you set up your business, like New Jersey, for example. I set my business up in New Jersey. 
And um, I actually have a Google sheet. It's like 1,200 community developmental financial institutions. So basically, these are institutions connected to like the economic development economic development authority in the state, which the state funnels money specifically for businesses who may not have like perfect credit and stuff like that. So basically these banks are to help business owners right. like you. Um, so when you get that list, you're going to, you know, go to whatever one is in your state and then you're going to go to the email, um, preferably from a professional email and Basically, good morning, depending on what time of the day it is. Good morning, good evening. I'm interested. I'm the owner of, I'm sorry. I'm the owner of whatever your business name is. I'm interested in learning about grant funding options available for beauty businesses. I can be contacted through email or by phone. You put your number there. Wait for a response. Then you follow up every three days by phone or email until they respond. So that's a simple, that's literally what I did. I just kept following up. I could give that for free. I'll send you a link for that so people can get that, the list. This is going national. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> this is going national. Everybody's going to see this. Everybody's going to see this. It's a lot of free game in here, man. I hope y'all listening to the end. Um, tap in with her. It's a lot of free game right here. I got to be watching. Also, you're not leaving right now. <laughs> we got to talk a little bit. But, um... Give them all your give them all the, all of your social media links. Let them know about your, the class that's available, your, the, the pricing of everything, and also um, your salon. Let them know everything that's available. Okay, I can be reached at Asada Chrome on Instagram. A S A T A K R O M E. That's my personal page. My business page is You and Sugaring Studio. Um, you can get the digital product, the course with everything in it on my website, growyourbeautybiz.com. That's B-I-Z at the end. Um, the link to the free training will be below this video. And the link to the list of 1,200 banks that give funding to business owners with bad credit and stuff like that will be linked underneath here too. All right. There you have it. That's it. There you go.